Station, this is Chelsea Bayarte with NASA Communications. How do you hear me? Chelsea, we have you loud and clear. How about us? Good morning. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Uh, we have a really big group on our phone bridge eager to hear all about your mission. Uh, reporters calling in, please go ahead and press star one at this time to enter our question queue. In the meantime, Butch and Sunny, I'll toss it over to you for some opening remarks. Okay. Well, great, Chelsea. Thank you so much. Uh, it's Welcome aboard the International Space Station first. Uh, it's a great place to be, a great place to live, a great place to work. Uh, as you can see, the American flag behind us uh, showing the pride in our nation and what uh, we have been able to do to this point on this mission. I thought I would take a few minutes and talk about the first couple of days of the mission uh, when we were in Starliner. So let's, uh, let's start there. Uh, launch was spectacular. I mean, truly amazing. And then we got into our operational capabilities checks, and the, the spacecraft performed unbelievably well. We have these things called uh, Hooper Carper's rating scale, 1 to 10, 1 being the best, uh, 10 being the worst. I've never given a 10 in all my flight test year, excuse me, a 1 in all my flight test years uh, on a Hooper Carper rating scale for handling qualities, but I was tempted. That's how precise this spacecraft controlled in all aspects of the various tests we did. I won't go into those details of what the tests were, but it was truly amazing the precision that this spacecraft held. And then we got into day two, the start of day two. It was the same starting off. And then we did have some failures, as we're all aware. We had some, lost a, 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 an RCS jet, and then we lost a, another one. And then you could tell the thrust, uh, the, the control, the capability was degraded. The handling qualities were not the same. But thankfully, uh, we had uh, practiced and we had gotten certified for manual control. And so we took over manual control for over an hour mm -hmm. on the V-bar, the axis where we actually rendezvous with the space station. And for over an hour while the, the teams on the ground did their troubleshooting, and we got a couple of jets back. And then from that point on, you could tell that the thrust was degraded at the time. We didn't know why. Obviously, uh, that, that since the failures had just happened, you could tell it was degraded, but it was still impressive. Uh, let me give you an example. Coming into docking, those final 10 meters, um, we have a tolerance when we actually connect with the space station of five degrees in attitude and about four inches in position. And so Starliner came right down in automatic mode at this point and right down the middle, even with the degraded thrusters, which was truly impressive, knowing what we know now and not knowing what we know, not knowing it then, but what we know now, truly impressive that even in the, with degraded thrusters, the capability was there to actually dock that precise. Uh, and then, of course, we became Expedition 71 crew members. Uh, we're fully certified for all aspects of life aboard the space station here. Uh, whether it's spacewalks or operating the over-orbit arm or maintenance, which we've done a lot of, uh, that's part of living here. You have to keep the space station going. And uh, over to Sunny for some of those details. Yeah, thanks, Butch. Uh, I'll just add a couple other things once that we did once we got onto the space station. We still had a lot of checks for Starliner, and those all went really well. One of them was um, practicing for safe haven to make sure that we had all the emergency equipment that's laid out that we need to have to get into our spacecraft and use it as a safe haven in, in case something happens to the International Space Station. Um, there was also another, a couple other tests with habitability to make sure that the spacecraft is ready to support four people. We grabbed a couple uh, ISS crew members to come in there with us and, uh, and go through all of the actions, and as well as uh, checked out the ECLIS, the environmental control system, pretty thoroughly throughout all these tests, and it really worked very well. So we are really satisfied with putting more people in the spacecraft once we get back and we work through all the issues that we've found already. Um, I'll just reiterate again, this is a test flight. We were expecting to find some things, and so we are finding stuff, and we're, we're correcting it and making changes, making updates with our control team. Every day we had uh, conferences to go over uh, things that we found or we thought about or we might add for the next flight. Once we got onto the space station, um, beside for all the Starliner tests, we've been integrated right into Expedition 71, 71 plus as we call it, and we've been doing science for them, uh, maintenance, some major maintenance that um, has been waiting for a little while, like stuff that's been on the books for a little bit. There's the uh, urine processor pump 
that we um, took one good pump out and put into a good body, and uh, it's called Franken Pump. Uh, that's ready to go in case we have any problems with the urine processing system. Um, Butch and I just did a, uh, a moderate temp temperature loop, low temperature loop cooling uh, refill for all the all the USOS modules. Uh, I got to do some gene sequencing. I think you got to do some other science experiments mm -hmm. as well um, with a moon microscope uh, that was 3D printed. So we've been thoroughly busy up here, integrated right into the crew. And uh, every every about once a week, we get to jump into Starliner and talk to our control team there and work through all uh, the new nuances that are that they're working that they're working very hard on the ground to make sure that we uh, will be able to come home before too long. Over to you, Chelsea. That sounds great. Thanks, Butch and Sunny. Uh, let's jump into some questions. We're going to start with Bill Harwood with CBS News. Um, Butch, given what you just what you just told us in your remarks, um, based on what you know today, how confident are you that the Starliner will get you home safely, given the known helium leaks and the earlier thruster issues? And as test pilots, are you satisfied you have a workable backup procedures in place? if the normal deorbit plan cannot be executed for some reason. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. For, that's a good question, Bill, obviously. Um, yes, I'll say yes to all of those questions. We're absolutely confident. We've already, as Sonny mentioned, for Safe Haven, we had that uh, uh, test, not just the, the, the test, but also to, to do it for real when we had that possible conjunction a few weeks ago. And we got in Starliner. We were ready to go. Everything's in place as far as what we know now. That's a, that is a good point. We are actually doing thruster testing as we speak at White Sands, New Mexico, going through that process, uh, trying to replicate what we saw on that flight day two when we were rendezvousing, and we are, we're going to learn from that, and we're going to incorporate new processes, new procedures that we will uh, employ if necessary. So obviously, uh, right now, we are ready. Uh, we will be ready then, unless the, the, the data shows otherwise. But right now, based on what we know, we are absolutely ready. Our next question is from Marsha Dunn with the Associated Press. Marsha, go ahead with your question. Take, I'm sorry. Do you have any qualms whatsoever about returning in the Starliner yourself? Um, why or why not? You know, Marsha, you know, we've, we've been through a lot of simulations for this spacecraft to, you know, go through all sorts of iterations of failures. And I think where we are right now and what we know right now and how the spacecraft flew as it was coming in to do the docking, as Butch described, um, I, I feel confident that if we had to, if there was a problem with the International Space Station, we can get in our spacecraft and we can undock, talk to our team, and figure out the best way to come home. Um, yeah, we've, like I said, we've practiced a lot, so I have a feeling, I have a, a real good feeling in my heart that uh, the spacecraft will, br will bring us home, no problem. But like Butch said, we're learning now to make, to optimize our specific situation and make sure that we know everything about it. You know, if we just came home, we'd lose the SM and then we wouldn't be able to go through all this testing and understand about our spacecraft. I envision that we'll still do testing when we undock and make sure, before we undock actually first to open the helium valves and then secondly once we undock to make sure everything is working correctly um, as we as it's planned from what they found out during the thruster testing. So I have confidence, Butch has confidence, um, we're here on the space station with our safe haven of Starliner. And I will add this, that we were able to rendezvous and dock because of the team effort. Uh, guys like Dean Lenort and our, uh, our propulsion officer and Ed Van Sice, our, our flight director, and the team on the ground is uh, working together. What we did, taking over manual control while they assessed the situation and coming to the conclusion that we could re-enable those, those RCS jets that had failed and then get us here safely, as I said, with the precision still there with some degraded thrusters. Uh, and we feel confident that this team will do the same on the way home. Our next question will be from Ken Ching with the New York Times. Uh, Ken, I wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up that we might get a momentary loss of signal pretty soon. But if you want to go ahead with your question, and then we'll just repeat it if we have to. Uh, 
um, ISS. Um, also, can you give us examples of what you might hear from this the test that White Sands that would give you uh, concerns about the safety of Starliner for coming back to Earth? Thank you. Hey, Ken, it does look like we lost them there, so I'll have you repeat their question, your question once okay. they get back online. Uh, should just be a couple more seconds. I will take this time to remind everybody that we will have another news conference, uh, a longer one this time, uh, with uh, NASA and Boeing leadership later today. So be sure to tune in for that as well. In the meantime, we'll wait for Butch and Sunny to come back to us from the space station. All right, Ken, do you want to repeat your question? Sure. Uh, first, I was saying, I imagine you're not complaining that you got to spend a few extra weeks at ISS. And second, I was wondering, is there anything that would come out of test? Can you give examples of something that would come out of test at White Sands that would give you pause about the status of Starliner and that for it being able to take you home safely? Thank you. Yeah, you, we are having a great time here on ISS. You know, Butch and I have been up here before, and it feels uh, like coming back home. It feels good to float around. It feels good to be in space and work up here with the International Space Station team. So, yeah, it's great to be up here. So I, I'm not complaining. Butch isn't complaining that we're here for a couple weeks, um, extra weeks. Uh, I mean, your question is full of speculation. I really don't know personally exactly what could come out of there um, that would give us a huge amount of pause. What we want to, what we want to know is that the thrusters can perform. Um, if whatever their percentage of thrust is, we can put it into a package that will get us a deorbit burn. That's the main purpose that we need the service module to get us a good deorbit burn, so that we can come back. You know, our OMAC thrusters, our bigger ones, uh, we haven't really had a problem with them. So we, you know, we are very confident in the deorbit burn capability with the number of OMAX that we have. It's just that attitude from the RCS thruster. So, um, you know, with a little bit, of, if it if they are degraded, we'll find out if they really are degraded, um, what that combination is to get us the right attitude. And I, I think with the number of jets we have, we're probably going to find something really positive. So beyond um, guessing, I, I think that's as good as I'm going to give you as an answer. Yeah, one other thing, that during the burn itself, uh, once we get to the burn, we're, we're pretty much home free as long, as long as the old max uh, continue to operate, and there's no reason they wouldn't because the old max can maintain the attitude themselves during the burn. So that's another added feature that is in our in our favor. We'll now go to Gina Sinceri with ABC News. What did this hurricane look like from the space station, and how are your homes doing down here? You, is everyone okay? Lost power? Uh, tell me about that. Yes, the a hurricane is quite impressive. And I don't think many people know this, but I, I actually took a picture of a storm that was off the west coast of Africa about a week and a half before the hurricane impacted. And I'm about 98 percent sure that that was the, the one that became barrel. Uh, four days later, it was hurricane strength. I took some video of it, set it down. I don't know if the Weather Channel showed it or not, but uh, showed it. And uh, it was, like I said, very impressive. We got some pictures a couple of days later. And uh, as, as, as it was very fortunate, the hurricane did slow down in its intensity, as you know. And I I think all of our families are doing well. We've got down trees like most people, uh, but thankfully we've got good church folks and good uh, neighbors that are coming by and, and helping us out clean up. Yeah, I'll add just an interesting aspect of it. When it was really strong, we were able to take pictures of the eye and actually see the definition of the eye. And Butch and I were up in the cupola the other day as, right as it was getting ready to hit the, the Texas coast, and you could see it had dispersed. The clouds had dispersed, but it was very, still very circular and still very huge. So we know we were praying for our friends down there in Mission Control and all of our family and friends in, in, in the Houston area, hoping everybody would be okay. And yep, power is lost, trees are down, but we're a big team. Everybody pulls together in Texas. That's right, Sunny. Uh, we're going to go now to Tom Costello. We don't have a lot of time left, but uh, Tom, if you want to go ahead with your question, we'll make it a quick one. So understanding and appreciating everything you've said about the performance of Starliner, it is still billions of dollars uh, over budget, years behind schedule. It seems it's been snake bit at every turn. Are you confident in the performance of the ship for future missions as well? Yeah, you know, that's a fair question. Uh, I can tell you that uh, 
this is this is the the world of test. This is a tough business that we're in. Human spaceflight is not easy in any regime, and there have been multiple issues with every spacecraft that's ever been designed, and that's the nature of what we do. You know, that mantra you've heard, failure is not an option. That's why we are staying here now. Uh, we, we did have some degradation in and, and our thrusters, and we know that, and that's why we're staying, because we're going to test it. That's what we do. That's what we do in this business. We're going to get the data that we need to help inform our decisions so we make the right decisions, and that's why we feel confident. We've got a history of doing that going back decades in human spaceflight, and uh, that gives us confidence now that it will continue. We are very close and f uh, friends with those that are making these decisions, and we trust them. We trust their integrity. We trust their technology technical as, uh, acumen, and uh, we trust that uh, the tests that we're doing are the ones that we need to do to get the right answers to give us the data that we need to come back. Butch and Sunny, thanks so much for taking the time. We're excited to talk to you again shortly before you come home. Have a great rest of your mission. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.